Not hearing any further public comment, we'll move on to reports of standing or ongoing Board of Governors uh, committees. Uh, the first report is by the exciting chair of the executive committee, which is myself. We had our executive committee meeting planning for this. All of those plans went out the door uh, completely. Uh, this was all uh, planned within the last uh, seven uh, days um, without any of the uh, great plans that the executive committee worked hard on. Um, but we have most of the topics engaged. I had a lot of pressure to trim it back, but I think we can get all the regular work of the Board of Governors done. Um, and we'll have discussion on that more as to how we move forward at the end of our meeting today. And then next we have Governor Russell Knight with the Apex Awards Committee, maybe. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, Governor. Okay. Uh, yeah, just two updates on the uh, Apex Awards. The first is that nominations are due Monday. Uh, so if um, we've received a lot of nominations, but if you know someone who is deserving of one of the Apex Awards, uh, get your nomination in by Monday. Uh, we have a lot of nominations, but um, uh, we want to make sure you have an opportunity to do so. So, uh, that's the deadline. The second is uh, going to be discussed later on the agenda, and that is <clears throat> whether the um, way we presented the awards should be sunsetted and we should look to something else. Uh, talk to many members of um, the committee. Uh, there's generally not a lot of opposition to ending the traditional dinner, provided that we have some meaningful way to present the awards that doesn't diminish the importance of the awards. Uh, so that's some discussion for later in the meeting. Thanks. Thank you, Governor. And now we'll move to uh, uh, Governor Stevens. Have you been able to join us as of yet? So Governor Stevens is trying to join us and um, uh, we'll come back, we'll circle back to that. Uh, Legislative Committee, Governor Shukadi. Thank you. Um, the Legislative Committee has been meeting. Um, we, the legislature wrapped up its uh, session um, last week, and so we'll have a full report on that um, this afternoon, I believe. One, um, one other comment that I would like to make, and, and thank you, Governor Knight, for reminding me. Um, the Legislative Review Committee and all other committees uh, there, the application deadline for applying to those committees is March 27th. Um, so I would encourage people who are thinking about uh, applying to any of our committees. Um, on the, they are all set out on the website, and you can take a look at that. But the deadline is March 27th, and we need those applications by then. Hearing some feedback, so I'm going to do a check of your microphones, which I can do from here. And I see you all very dutifully uh, muted. Um, so onwards and upwards, I guess. Okay. Next, we have uh, nominations committee, uh, which is chaired by Governor King and Governor Shiketi, which I believe met this morning. Yes. Thank you, um, Governor King. Was not able to um, be with us. I don't believe is she on the line. I don't believe she so. um, the, the nominations committee met this morning and considered uh, uh, three or four items, uh, the nomination and the selection to the pro bono and public service committee. Um, the committee has unanimously recommended Naomi De La Rocha Minkler to that committee and she will be appointed. The uh, committee also considered the appointment for the records request appeals officer and the, uh, the committee unanimously selected a Southwest Washington uh, resident and member of the Clark County Prosecuting Attorney's Office, Emily Sheldrick, to fill that position. We did have a couple other um, applicants, very qualified applicants, and we're going to reach out to them and see if there's other um, opportunities where they can volunteer their services. We corrected a term um, uh, mistake that we made last year to correct a, a term that was supposed to be for one year. We did three years. We, we 
corrected that. And then finally, we appointed the court user work group um, representative, um, Governor Kim Hunter. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Governor Higetti. Next, we have the diversity committee. Uh, Governor Jean Kang, who's the go chair of that, uh, sent me this following comment to make on behalf of the diversity committee. The committee is actively recruiting for all. This is at the WSBA, pod committees and section. And to thank you, governors, for their support. Uh, this is really important because, um, uh, you know, Always getting a healthy roster of candidates is always has been a challenge in past years. I think this Board of Governors in particular is changing that mentality and inspiring a lot of people to get involved in the Board of Governors, but it's great that we have people reaching out to uh, um, all kinds of members trying to get them more involved in the WSBA. Next, we have the Long Range Planning Committee, Governor Swago. Um, thank you. Um, I've been a little bit remiss and we haven't uh, held a meeting recently, but uh, I do believe that this opportunity um, presents uh, some possibilities for the committee, um, uh, maybe uh, along the lines of some of the things that the member of the public talked about, you know, how can we help small um, firms deal with crises uh, of this sort? and um, what sort of assistance can we provide on the technological front and uh, so forth. So um, nothing else to report, happy to take any suggestions for other ideas that the committee should be looking at, uh, maybe arising out of this crisis, but uh, I do believe it sort of suggests some possibilities for um, looking at long-term strategies for um, both the profession and our professionals. Governor Swigel, am I correct in understanding you guys are working on a rewrite of the charter? Yes, and that is a work in progress. Okay. Uh, let me follow up with you on that. Thank you. Please do. Uh, next, we have the new member engagement work group, Governors Kim Hunter and Dan Clark, the co chairs. Governor Hunter isn't available. Governor Clark, would you like to? Uh, say any words or write me any words rapidly? Um, yeah, I, I, I did a, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, a mail receive. Uh, yeah. Oh, thanks. Uh, well, that's for budget not. Oh, there you go. All right, thank you. So for the member engagement committee, there's a written report in the BOG materials, new regular materials. Things are going well. We have, we, the <laughs> member engagement committee, have a proposed bylaw change later in the meeting, uh, which They'd urge us all to approve. Anyone that wants to participate in the new committee, uh, Kim and I would encourage you get you to get involved in. And I think, uh, Dan, do you mean um, uh, uh, proposed revised charter? And also, there's uh, that's what you mean, correct, Dan? Yes, yes. Great, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Clark. Okay, next we have... Uh, budget and audit, and Dan has sent written comments that I'm going to read uh, for us. Um, we have a more fuller budget, as we always do, a more full budget and audit discussion later on, but here is a summarization from our treasurer. We're approximately halfway through fiscal year 2020. We're ahead of schedule on accomplishing several financial projects and goals that the budget and audit committee and Dan as treasurer has set at the start of the fiscal year. Everyone on Budget and Audit Committee is working extremely hard, and he's proud that we've accomplished so much working together collaboratively. A uh, comprehensive treasurer's written report has been prepared by Dan, Governor Clark, as included in the BOG regular book at page 170 to 175. If you have any specific questions, please don't hesitate to email him about those. He did, however, want to give you a quick summary of the highlights of his written report. A third of the year through the WSBA financials, we're at the end of, at the end of January 2020, we are $359,000 in overall net uh, positive. Uh, this is a 951,438 uh, positive fiscal position versus the fiscal year 2020 budgeted numbers. Uh, so prior to the pandemic, we we're doing really great and far exceeding expectations on revenue over expenditures, which is wonderful to hear. And uh, thank you, uh, WSBA, for working hard to make us as trim as possible so we can deal with crises like this. 
The pandemic is going to likely re result in additional costs for the WSBA, a lot of which are unknown and dependent on how long and how bad the pandemic gets. Please know that Tara, Rajiv, Kyle, and I, Dan Clark, along with the WSBA executive team members, are working collaboratively together to work together as a team to best get through with as minimal financial adverse impact to the FY 2020 budget as possible. But at the same time, taking the necessary steps to comply with public health directives and take measures to promote social distancing and limit exposure of WSBA staff and volunteers. Tara is going to be presenting today a request for an extra $25,000 of budgetary authority um, for the staff to be able to properly deal with the coronavirus outbreak. This is something Treasurer Clark supports and urges each of you to vote with in favor of. Uh, he's very proud of the collaborative process that was engaged in in an emergency basis by Rajiv, Kyle, and Treasurer, and Tara, and Felix, and Jorge, and Julie over the weekend to work through the best practices for implementing this request. It truly was a team effort, and that process was very productive, respectful, professional, and collaborative. I, Dan Clark, believe that the fiscal ask is a very financial, prudent use of member license fees in dealing with this pandemic. Next. I believe that the WSBA was able to have the financial deposits returned for the Olympia meeting in full because of the two-day traditional bog meeting march being canceled and we going into telephone meetings. We were able to save significant costs to travel and lodging, meeting room, rental space, and food expenses for the March meeting. These savings should be able to approximately pay for most of the added cost requests that uh, the executive director is making. And a side note from the president, thank you, Shelley, for your hard work on that. Uh, we're almost done with the deep dive audit and the fiscal year 2020 budget reforecast. You should have both of those reports fully completed and ready to present to the Board of Governors at the April Board of Governors meeting. Both projects have been a tremendous amount of work, and Dan would like to personally thank Jorge and his financial team for the hard work. With the reforecast, Dan would like to thank Tara, the BOG exec team, and all of the managers as well. In conclusion, it is and continues to be a tremendous honor to have the privilege to serve as treasurer and district four governor. Thank you. And please let me know if you have any questions. Respectfully, Dan Clark. Thank you, uh, Governor Clark. And now, oh, slightly ahead of my hope for schedule. Um, let's see if we're ready for that. Uh, we're supposed to move to reports of task forces, work groups, liaisons, and WSB entities. We had on schedule uh, a report on the ABA mid-year meeting from WSBA ABA delegate, delegate Kostov Das. Are you present, Mr. Das? I am present. Uh, can yeah. you hear me? Sure. All right. Hello, uh, President Majumdar. It's my pleasure to report on the ABA mid-year meeting. Uh, of course, I want to start by acknowledging the difficult time this is for everyone in the WSBA and uh, hopefully everyone's staying safe and doing well. Uh, I will try to keep my comments short, uh, primarily because I know uh, the Board of Governors dealing with. Uh, I see. I think we had a hand up uh, in the chat. I don't know how we. I'm supposed to respond to that or not. Someone put in a chat saying, I think we had a hand up. This is Tara. If it was me, you can just disregard. I just wanted to let President Majumdar know that I think uh, Alex Stevens is on the phone now. That is correct. All right, should I continue? Yes, please, Mr. Doss, thank you so much. Um, so the ABA House of Delegates uh, meeting was at the media meeting uh, was on February 17th in Austin, Texas. Uh, I start by noting that one of the really nice things about this year's mid-year meeting was the uh, ABA's acknowledgement and recognition of this being the centenary of the 19th Amendment, amendment passing. So lot of the delegates, I think almost half the uh, women delegates uh, were uh, dressed in white. A lot of ma male delegates were dressed in white. The ABA had a great exhibit on the 19th Amendment. So that was actually kind of a neat uh, thing a, outside of all of the 
uh, resolutions that were passed. Um, uh, Tara included the list of resolutions that were passed uh, in this meeting. And I'd like to briefly talk about a few of those, starting with uh, resolution 10A, which basically is, uh, and again, for those of you who may not be ABA junkies, I'm not, but I'm becoming one by being a delegate. Uh, the way the ABA works is uh, for the ABA to take an official position on any legal issue, uh, the House of Delegates must have passed a resolution on that issue. So a lot of the the resolutions that are passed uh, tend to be fairly technical. Uh, some of them, like uh, 10, Resolution 10A, which the WSBA was a co-sponsor on, uh, was passed because basically it came to the ABA's attention that we that it somehow had not taken a position on missing and murdered indigenous women. So this resolution urges federal, state, local, territorial, and tribal governments to acknowledge and prioritize responding to MMIW. Uh, the resolution was brought, brought to the ABA's attention by another uh, delegate, with, and not the ABA, sorry, the WSBA's attention by another delegate in the Washington group who is actually the KCBA delegate. Um, and she, in turn, was contacted by the ABA treasurer, Mary Smith, who was actually the only Native American woman in the House of Delegates. Uh, we hope that will change over time. Uh, when she, uh, Mary Smith realized that the ABA had no position on the MMIW, it was the first uh, resolution that was taken up. Uh, obviously, people spoke. There really was no opposition to it, and, uh, and it was a very well received uh, resolution. Uh, another resolution that was passed, which I think would be of interest to the WSBA, is uh, 10B, which uh, basically deals with uh, police brutality and examine existing policies of use of lethal force against individuals during law enforcement encounters. So that too passed without uh, without a lot of uh, dissent, a lot of discussion. Uh, to Again, there's far too many resolutions here to go through. Uh, I'm happy to address any specific resolutions people may have questions on. Otherwise, I'll just touch lightly on a few of the ones that uh, give you a sense of what the House of Delegates uh, does. Uh, one of them, for example, was uh, 101B, which is uh, related to intellectual property. It has. It was a resolution dealing with a disclosure of internet domain name registration contact information. Uh, why is the ABA taking a position on this? It turns out that with the passage of the General Directive on Privacy Rights, or most of you have probably heard of GDPR, which is uh, the European privacy rights law that went into effect a couple of years ago. It's become very difficult to get the uh, domain name registrant information, which makes it hard to enforce IP rights. So this was the sort of issue on which the ABA couldn't have spoken, and even its uh, intellectual property section couldn't have spoken without the House of Delegates uh, taking a position. One um, uh, one uh, amusing, uh, only because it was so con contentious, uh, resolution that was passed had to do with ensuring that, like uh, postal workers, uh, law enforcement uh, officers got, get training on de-escalating animal encounters. Apparently, the Postal Service does this. Uh, the law enforcement doesn't. Uh, and I was quite surprised as to how contentious that was because a lot of people felt that the ABA really shouldn't be taking positions on something like that because somehow it sort of lessens or cheapens the ABA's House of Delegates. People pointed out the ABA, like the WSBA, has an animal law section, so it kind of does make sense for them to take this.
And so, but that was a little bit of a digression in sort of otherwise uh, things which were not as contentious. Um, there were legislate uh, resolutions relating to legislation of marijuana, which were one hundred three B and one hundred three D. Um, another uh, resolution that was adopted with a fair amount of debate and uh, discussion was one that created uh, where the uh, ABA is urging Congress to create a private right of action under the Air Carrier Access Act um, uh, to allow uh, individuals with disabilities to actually bring a private right of action instead of having to go through the FAA. Um, Fairly contentious, fairly debated, but it was eventually approved as um, as uh, proposed. Resolution 108 uh, is one that I think is, again, very consistent with the WSBA's position on um, issues relating to uh, Voting Act and voting rights. This is a resolution which urges uh, federal, state, local, territorial, and tribal governments to enact legislation that sort of allows 16 to 18 year olds to pre-register so that once they reach voting age, they'll automatically get registered. This is again, a move by the ABA to try to encourage more participation by uh, younger voters. Um, let's see. Um, and the resolution, which is probably the most contentious going before the meeting, there was a lot of email traffic around it, uh, but um, in the end turned out not to be contentious at the meeting because a lot, lot of work went on before the meeting to get address the uh, sort of issues that had come up is one that again um, shows us significant change in the ABA's position. Last year, they adopted a resolution encouraging use of legal online services. This one encourages US jurisdictions to consider adoption of regulatory innovation approaches to address the access to justice crisis in the US. The Washington state was mentioned as one of the states that's already started doing that um, in, in the uh, sort of report that was submitted. Uh, it was uh, contentious, as I said, but passed uh, as amended. Uh, mostly the amendments were uh, to the uh, report where people were concerned. So again, a useful uh, meeting, well attended by the Washington delegation, as is always the case. Uh, as I said, probably front and center was the MMIW resolution, which uh, the WSBA was a co-sponsor. Um, and um, that's all I had on the report. Thank you, um, Mr. Doss. I'll also point out that Mr. Doss is also, I believe, the president elect for the King County Bar Association. Isn't that, is that accurate? I'm the going to be. I'm the second vice president of the King County Bar Association. So if the slate gets voted in, then I'll be the president elect of the first vice president. Very good. Well, we thank you for your service. Do the governors have any questions for Mr. Bounce? No. I'm I'm glad we did this, and I think we'll do it again. Um, one emphasis. Um, Mr. Doss is a delegate of the WSBA to the ABA. And one thing I've been trying to emphasize is making sure we're in touch with our delegates so we know who to talk to, give feedback, get information from. Um, we've revived, this Board of Governors has revamped our processes so that the Legislative Committee can more rapidly react to uh, ABA matters. And I think more uh, communication between us and the ABA is a better thing for our membership and making sure that. Um, our delegates are getting us the information and we can give feedback. And I think it's this is a great step. And I'm hoping that at least twice a year we'll have ABA reports. So thank you very much, Mr. Doss. Not seeing any questions. Um, I'll thank you for your time. We'll move on to our next topic. 
Thank you, President Mazumdar.